Happy New Year, folks. Uh, this morning, I got a question from a customer about how can we have rate limiting on a per API key basis. So API key one gets a thousand requests a minute. API key two gets, you know, one request per minute. Well, I thought I'd show an example of that and we'll build it in real time here in this demo. But before I do that, let me tell you about a more complex example that we actually have that shows the superpower of Zoopla's rate limiting. So we have a great edge capable, fully distributed rate limiter that genuinely keeps everything in sync around the world. And um, you can set that to IP based rate limiting where it keys on IP address. You can set it by user where it keys on the, the subject of the user or the user ID. Very easy to do that. You don't need to write any code. You just write a little bit of configuration and you're off to the races. But really the superpower of Zooplo is it's dynamic rate limiting. And if you look at our documentation here, if you just search for actually search for Zooplo dynamic rate limiting, you'll come across, I think the top link is this here, and you will see um, our uh, example here of using a custom function. So in this, what you do is you configure it to use a function, you identify the module that you, and the, the function that you want it to call. And this is what the code looks like. And what we're going to do in this case for this example is we're going to actually read the data from the metadata of the API key. But I want to share with you that we have a much more complicated example that's far more powerful actually, where we store a row of records in a database, in this case in Superbase, that has the user ID and their requests allowed. And you could make that like a join table through organization, you know, whatever you like. And what we do in this much more involved example, there's a video for this as well, as well as a, a blog post, is we actually, on every request, we fir the first time we go and load the data from the database and we store that in cache, actually in zone cache, you'll see that being used here. And you can set the expiry on that however you like. And so that means that for subsequent requests, it's incredibly quick. But what could be more dynamic than being able to go into the database and change the values without having to redeploy your application? So that's how powerful the rate limiter is in Zooplo. But actually, one really convenient other thing to do is to store the rate limit allowed per key on the API key itself in the metadata. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to come in here. We're going to create a, I've got a project I just created called per key API rate limit. I'm going to create a new empty module called, let's call it custom rate limit. And I'm going to take this code from this example here. Let's just copy that and um, drop it in here. And I'm missing a type there, so I can just command dot and add that. And we don't need this exact code. We're going to change it a little bit, but it does show me how to implement a type that returns custom rate limit details, which is what we do. And essentially, all this needs to do is return the key. So that is the identifier for the rate limit bucket, effectively. So if you're in our internal implementation, when we're rate limiting by IP address, the key is the IP address, right? When we're rate limiting by user, it's by customer ID. When we're rate limiting by um, something custom, it's like whatever you want to extract from the request itself, that's up to you. In this case, we're gonna be rate limiting by user, but we're gonna load this value the requests allowed from the metadata of the API key. So let me show you the code to do that. So let's start here. We're going to say const custom requests allowed equals request dot user. So if you're using the API key policy or job policy or any of our authentication policies, there will be a user object if they successfully auth dot data. So that gets us into the metadata. In the case of a JOT token, that's the payload. In the case of um, API key, it's the metadata dot requests allowed is going to be the property we're going to create. And actually, I want to pass that as an int. I want that to be a number, so. Um, oh, uh, actually, no, it would be. If it's already a number in the thing, it'll be a number in here, yeah. So, so that's gonna be uh, a number. Let's just make sure it understands that. So I'm gonna put that into my TypeScript here. And I don't need this if statement because we're always gonna do this. And it's gonna be this easy. So now the key is gonna be request.user.sub, the user subject, and the request allowed. It's going to be custom request allowed. And that is our custom rate limiting policy. It's that easy. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go over here, create a route. Uh, we'll just use the echo backend as usual. I'll leave it as path zero. We're going to add the API key authentication policy. That's straightforward. And then we're going to add the rate limit policy. But instead of using IP or user, we're actually going to say function. And then what we do is we specify an identifier that has a module and the way we load modules in is a bit like this, but if it's a custom module, you'll see in this example here, actually it shows you. Let's just copy this so I don't have to type it out again. Do, do, do. There we go, is import, now I called it custom rate limit my module, so let's change that. But I left the 
export to be rate limit key. We should be good to go. So we should be able to test this out now, actually. So if I um, save that, let's just check we got, everything seems to be working first of all. So that's just deploying now, as you can see. Great, so test, let's test that. I expect a 401, unauthorized. Let's go and create an API key. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, add a new key, I'm gonna call it test one. I don't need to worry about manager because I'm not using the developer portal to sign in to get this key. And then I'm gonna add a property requests allowed. Let's do two for this. This is gonna allow two requests per minute. Let's save that. I'm gonna copy that key and come back over here. Go to test and then what we're gonna say is authorization bearer test, test. Boom, we got a 429 on the third request. So it allowed me to have two requests. Let's go and create a different API key called test2. And then we're going to specify the request allowed property to be 10. Okay. Save that. Copy that key. Make sure I'm copying test2. That would have been confusing. And 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boom. Four, two, nine. Too many requests. Custom rate limiting per API key using API key metadata. Last thing I'll mention is you can of course manage these API keys and the metadata associated with them using our developer API, which actually describes up here. So if you look at our API key management API, this will send you off to the um, uh, the Zuplo developer API documentation powered by Zuplo, of course. Here it comes. Yeah. And so, you know, you can manage your buckets, update the consumer, which is where the metadata is stored using this um, endpoint. Um, and so all of this can be automated. Some of our largest customers do exactly this. They store the, the requests allowed on the key, and then they have a sort of workflow that keeps the keys up to date as things change on the customer backend. Have fun, folks. Thank you.